Hey, how's it going? My name is Luke Stokes. I'm on the launch team for EOS DAC, which is a block producer for the EOS blockchain. And I want to talk a little bit about my perspectives on delegated proof of stake. Now, uh, one of the things I want to be real clear about is I'm just one person. I'm not representing EOS DAC in particularly. I mean, I know I've got like the logo and stuff, but um, this is just my personal views. So uh, all opinions, mine kind of a deal. Um, so when it comes to delegated proof of stake, one of the things I think is really important for people to understand is that it's, it's needs to be independent block producers who independently have a responsibility to the token holders to secure the blockchain. And I think some of the early block producers on EOS maybe aren't as familiar with that concept. You know, there, there's a lot of talk about creating subcommittees and grouping people together and working together on projects and things like that. And I understand the desire for efficiency. I understand the need to have a consistent face that we give the community for EOS as far as what the EOS blockchain itself is doing. People, people like centralization, unfortunately. They like to be governed, unfortunately. And, and I say when I say people, I mean the, the larger space, not necessarily a cryptocurrency community. And so they want, like, they want block one, for example, to be the place of truth they can go to. And that's just not how, the case. This is not block one's chain. This is our chain. This is the community's chain. And I want to push more towards a order out of chaos approach, the idea that from decentralized systems, we can have efficiencies kind of emerge. And for the first time ever, networks are, tech, these networks can be as efficient as hierarchies because of the technology. Previously, that wasn't possible. So with delegated proof of stake, we have these independent block producers who are working independently to earn votes from EOS token holders. And that's really important because if they're in any way colluding or uh, working together in a way that is, you know, hey, I'll scratch your back, you scratch mine, anything at all like that, even, even the perception of that, we have a problem. Like that introduces a systemic risk that actually can harm the security of a DPoS system. And those who understand delegated proof of stake really know this, you know, and I've, I've been a steam witness for over a year now. I've been in the consensus for over six months on steam. Uh, so I, I have some personal experience with this and something I'm very passionate about because I think it's an amazing thing. I think on-chain governance is a beautiful, incredible thing. A lot of people are worried about it. They're not ready for it. They think that blockchain should be, code only and completely immutable and you can, you know, that should be it. There should be no other human beings involved as much as possible. And I respect that opinion, but I also think it's a little bit naive because whoever gets to run the mining farms, whoever gets to uh, control the GitHub repo for the consensus code, um, the reference client, things like that, they, they are, that's governance. The governance exists whether or not we want to admit it or not. So my perspective is everything should be fully radically transparent and on chain. So take that governance and put it on chain, take, you know, decisions that have to be made in the interests of the community and put those on chain, let token holders actually vote for people who are going to make those decisions. And then with some skin in the game, actually hold them accountable to how they voted. That's an important part of what makes this system work. So I wanted to just kind of put a message out there to get people to think a little bit different as far as how we as a community are progressing forward. I don't think we should be looking to block producers to do everything or to coordinate together and accomplish everything. Ultimately, it's the community that should, and via market incentives, you know, via real solutions to bring in that people value, the community, the EOS token community should be solving problems and coming up with ideas. And from that, block producers should say, oh yeah, hey, we want to help support that. And maybe they work to a group of them work together or whatever, but it should be coming from the community. The community saying, hey, we have a problem. We need it solved. What, which block producer is going to step up to solve this problem? And obviously, like we want to do that because we want those votes, right? We're incentivized to step up and say, yeah, that's it. That is a problem. We'd like to solve that. And so I'd like to see less kind of centralized, kind of committee feel type stuff and more independent community members saying, hey, we're doing a thing, who wants to support it? So the only time, from my perspective, the only time that the block producers need to coordinate is when they're gonna make a system contract change or they're gonna make a code upgrade change. They're gonna, there's something on chain that they have to get agreement to do. And even then, they don't even necessarily need to have a call to talk about it. They can just say, hey, by the way, here's a proposed contract change that I've put on the network. It's a proposed transaction that's sitting out there. 
And here's all the documentation for everything that it does. Here's the you know, full way you can verify the code yourself. And then essentially put it out there to say, okay, if we get two thirds plus one to agree, then now we have this new feature as part of the system. You know, that's how I see the block producers coordinating together. And it could be obviously this very transparent community driven process all the way up to that point, many weeks or months or however long it takes to say, hey, here's what we want, here's the problem we're solving and here's how we're gonna solve it. And, and I'm okay with multiple block producers putting out their own versions. You know, one of the things that I really like about delegated proof of stake is this coordinated cooperation and, and it's a, a more efficient in a lot of ways than proof of work. And, and again, I'm a huge fan of proof of work as well. I own multiple cryptocurrencies. I'm involved in multiple projects. I'm not a maximalist in any way, but one way to think about proof of work is we have 10,000 people working on a problem and every 10 minutes we throw, that, we throw away 9,999 of their answers. And we say, yeah, we're just gonna take this one answer. So everybody start over again. And now we, you know, we have 10,000 people working again for the next 10 minutes from scratch. And we do this over and over again on Bitcoin. And it, you know, it is what it is, but it's not the most efficient process. And some people say, well, that's the point, you know, it costs money and all that. I, I get that. I get that's what secures the chain. But I also think there's some value in rational ways to do a coordinated cooperation to accomplish something. Now it doesn't have to be centralized though. It can be, I'd be happy with 21 block producers independently working on the same project and then proposing it all 21 and then essentially on chain voting for one of them to be put forward to solve this problem for a community. And some might say, oh man, that's radically inefficient. Why would you do that? It's still more efficient than proof of work, right? Like, so I don't think that in order to accomplish stuff, we as block producers have to completely coordinate or have to get permission or anything. We can just do stuff and then put it out there and say, hey, if this is what your token holders want and they want you to vote in support of it, then we have the power and ability to do that. And, and that's a beautiful thing. It's also a very, very sobering and scary thing as far as the amount of power that delegated proof of stake block producers have. And this is something that I feel the EOS community is not handling well from a PR perspective, right? I put out a couple of videos recently. Uh, you can see people very upset with what they see as a concern. Uh, some people saying, oh man, this is a, not immutable and you guys aren't a real blockchain. This isn't cryptocurrency. There's a lot of kind of, you know, all kinds of critiques going on out there because of this issue of the power that the block producers have. And I think that the best approach is to say, yes, we'll just be upfront. This is a governed blockchain. There is a constitution, there's a set of ethics, and we have, without having to do a full code rollout, a hard forking change that other blockchains would and have historically done in order to change something, we have the ability to do some of this on chain. We can, we can modify a system contract and push it out there. So these kind of things, and also token contracts, and this is an important thing I wanna talk about. So EOS DAC just, yesterday, finished our token distribution. We're super excited about that. If you held the ERC20 EOS DAC tokens, go check your wallet. You now have EOS official EOS DAC tokens, and that's really exciting. But it's also within our team, we're, we're recognizing, holy moly, the private key for that account has control of that contract. That's scary, meaning anything could change. You could change the number of tokens. You could change who, you know, you could add extra rules to say who could transfer to who. You could do all kinds of stuff. Whatever code you could imagine, you have the ability, if you control that, the private key that runs that contract to make those changes. Now we at EOS DAC see that as a major problem and we're working with a professional organization to help us solve that with multi-sig. And we're going to hopefully set the standard for how any token contracts should be put out there in a way that is decentralized as much as possible in a way that the token holders can have trust that the, the token they purchase or the token that they're using as a utility is going to remain what they expected at the time they purchased it or it was given to them. And that's an important thing because most people don't, they, they have no experience with a token that could just change properties in real time that, that, that whoever controls that private key could just modify that token contract. So those are things that are, a concern. And I think we need to be upfront about those concerns as a community and educate people on how this system actually functions. And this is why, again, we're a big fan of DAX, decentralized autonomous communities, where governance is radically transparent, put on chain, and everybody can look at it and see, oh, okay, look, hey, they're proposing a change to the contract. Do we all agree? Yeah. I mean, like maybe they're going to introduce inflation. Maybe they're going to, you know, burn some tokens. Maybe who knows what. 
but whatever changes that get proposed need to be done, in my opinion, need to be done transparently and openly so the whole community can see it and say, oh, wait, do we agree? Do we not agree? And then there's going to be some kind of system of governance where they, those changes can be ratified and agreed to. So in the case of EOS DAC, once we get our DAC toolkit available, those are our 12 custodians that are voted in by our token holders, the EOS DAC token holders, those members who've, who've chosen to be part of the, the DAC. They'll be able to vote in those people to say, yeah, we, we agree with the changes, the, the power and control you have to modify something as important as the EOS DAC token contract, you know? So these are the kind of things I just want to put out there to make sure people recognize, yes, EOS is a brand new experiment. There is a ton of power that's given to those who create contracts on the system. Those contracts can be modified. This is not like Ethereum where the contracts are locked in forever. And if there's a security bug or any concern like, oh, well, everyone loses out we have the ability to fix things. That's cool. It's also very sobering. It's very dangerous as far as who we trust because we do have a situation where whoever has control of those keys has control of the code and they can make changes. Just like whoever has control of uh, you know, GitHub repo for Bitcoin or any of the reference clients for any of these proof of work systems, if they roll out a sec an update and all the different mining nodes and all the users update their software, and there's a security vulnerability, but you have that same risk. Whoever has control to push out code has the potential ability to destroy a community. So we have that same problem here. And I think in the future, it's possible somebody's gonna do some kind of ICO with some kind of token and people are gonna be like, yay, and they're gonna buy it. And then they're gonna go in and they're gonna modify the token contract. And, and it's gonna be a huge problem. And people are gonna freak out because maybe they bought a token without recognizing whoever has the private key to that token contract has the ability to modify it. And of course, we've got arbitration as well. So hopefully, you know, when that type of situation comes up, the community, again, community driving the solutions will come together and say, hey, let's, let's actually work on this. Let's agree to deal with this with nonviolence. But it's going to be tricky because let's say you do an ICO with Bitcoin or Litecoin or Steam or some other token off chain, off the EOS chain, and then you give out an EOS token for that. And then the EOS token gets modified. And then someone goes to arbitration and say, oh my gosh, they, they stole all my tokens. It's like, well, well, they can't like go to their house and take their Bitcoin, right? No violence. It's part of the constitution. So we're going to, we're going to face some interesting governance challenges going forward. And I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, right? This is an experiment. This is a new thing. Humans have not ever had a mechanism for global nonviolent consensus that included governance in uh, such a dynamic way like we do with EOS. So I'm excited about it. I'm excited about what we're going to learn from it. I think other amazing projects like uh, you know, BitShares and Steam and other delegated proof of stake systems are going to learn from EOS. I think they're going to learn some good things and bad things and everything in between as we figure this stuff out. So just to kind of summarize, my main point is delegated proof of stake requires independent block producers to be working independently to support initiatives that I believe the community should initiate community being the ones to say, hey, we see a market need for this, we want to accomplish this, who wants to help us make it happen? That's the model I'd like to see. Uh, any, any coordination, cooperation, collaboration, anything like that between block producers that could even be perceived as something that could threaten the security and independence of the DPoS system should be avoided at all costs. And people who understand what secures a delegated proof of stake system should understand this and be wary of that. So it's kind of a message to my fellow block producers out there. Just, you know, make sure that you're doing your own thing and you're independent because that you're accountable to the token holders and they want to know that you are an independent representative on the blockchain. And if you're, you know, there's concerns about the token distribution and whether or not those block producers are representing the actual wide range of token holders. And, and all I can say to that is, hey, check out EOS stack. Check out the, and I'll, I'll include a link in the description of the video. Check out the distribution of token holders as far as large whale accounts and small token holders. And we have a lot of small token holders that support EOS stack. And I'm actually really proud of that. And more so than any others at this moment in the top 21. So that tells me that the little guys recognize us as somebody that can represent them and represent their voice. And I think that's very cool. I think proxy voting and other things like that will hopefully allow more little people, more little token holders, little people sounds terrible, more, more people that have less financial uh, incentive in the system, uh, still a chance to have a voice that matters. And I, and I agree that those who have the most to lose, those who have invested the most money should have a strong voice. I, I understand how that secures the chain as well. 
but I do think the token distribution is always going to be a hot topic. It's always going to be a concern. And if those with too much power do things the community doesn't like, well, hey, this is the beauty of open source technology. The technology will be forked and the community will move on to somewhere that treats them better. So let's avoid that if we can and treat everybody awesome. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like, subscribe. I plan to do more uh, stuff like this because I, uh, I think it's useful. And I hope, I hope the green screen here isn't too distracting. I have fun with it. I, this background image is not some random one. It's actually a picture I took in Costa Rica. So it has very, it's very dear to my heart. I love this sunset picture. So it's not just some random one, if you're curious. Uh, somebody made a comment about that in a previous video. Um, but yeah, thanks so much and leave a comment. I'd love to know what you think about this and I'd love to know your perspective. Thanks so much. Take care.